Absolutely, I'd be satisfied if I won. It wouldn't be like a, a lifelong, I mean, it would be a lifelong goal, but it wouldn't allow me to rest on my laurels uh, even for the rest of the season. Um, it's definitely something I, I think is doable and something I want to achieve, but um, it would only keep me hungry to keep doing more. All right, what happened? Uh, yeah, uh, I've been hit by a car on the uh, series, the training day series. So what happened coming back, a lady basically decided to T-bone me. Um, and uh, well, anyways, the story's kind of crazy. She hits me, well, so she pulls out right in front of me as I'm already in the intersection. So I see her out of my peripheral. So I slam on the brakes, my rear wheel skidding. And then I actually sometimes think about if this would have ever happened to me. So then I like slammed my bike into the back of her car and rolled over the back of her car. And uh, you can see on my right side, on my left side, that's kind of how I landed and absorbed the impact. Anyways, I land out. She's, by the time I get up, she's out of her car. And I get up and I'm like, what the f are you doing? What were you thinking? And she goes, I will not tolerate you swearing at me. That's her f answer. I will not tolerate you swearing at me. And I'm like, okay, well, what happened? Like, it seemed like you saw me. She goes, yes, yes, I absolutely saw you. I saw that you were going in the intersection, but I decided I could make it in front of you. So she, she saw me, she slammed on the gas and then like made this super sharp turn as I was already there. And I was like, well, that doesn't seem like a very good idea. And she says, well, you were going faster than I thought. Um, anyways, I'm happy to be mostly okay. You all right? Um, I'm mostly just like really pissed off um, because I was being like super heads up because stuff like this happens and uh, yeah, thankfully I think I'm okay, but uh, I just got to play it really smart here. Um, it could be a whole, whole, whole lot worse. My left hip here is feeling a little swollen, so uh, training's probably done for the day. Uh, gonna just be ice bathing and uh, yeah, I mean, eyes ahead, I think, so just uh, wanting to make sure that uh, we don't lose another another person on the star list for St. George. I mean, holy hell. How much has your life changed since, uh, I would say, 2019 to 2020? Yeah, it's been uh, obviously some huge changes for me. I was, I was in Kona. I, I wasn't qualified and I was watching the race in 2019 and and I was watching, uh, I mean, obviously I remember Jan Frodeno just absolutely smashing everyone and I remember just feeling like so far away from that level, not just of Jan, but anyone in the top 10 and thinking like, how am I ever going to get there? And, and now here we are. So it's, it's been a huge transformation for me. No, I don't think it's ever an easy ride to the top. Um, I think with me, like, yeah, I was really kind of down low for a long time and then it sort of shot up, but like, I was just, wor I was working really hard and doing most of the things right, even when I wasn't performing well. And so like, it looks like it happened really fast, but it, there was just so much work that went in for years that, that took my body time to absorb. And then once it finally clicked, like the performances came, but there's definitely been setbacks and there's still setbacks every day, basically. So as we saw today. <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's a few things. One, I think, because um, I've actually tried to be like less of kind of a loud, brash guy now. And I think when I was just coming up and you don't have a following and, and I wasn't making any money in the sport and basically I had to say like, look at me, look at me, like, and I need attention. And, and to an extent it worked, right? It helped me get sponsors. It helped kind of bring up that social media and get people talking about me. But now that I've guess you could say like made it. I don't have to be quite as loud and I can just speak more with my, my race performances and, and what I actually do. And that's been quite a nice change for me, but it's definitely not, at, it, and it definitely never was out of disrespect. It's out of like making the sport fun and we do need rivalries and we do need the sport to be more interesting. And like, I'm still torn between, okay, like, and it just comes naturally to me. There's so many things I want to say that I still refrain from saying and because I know like it'll create a huge uproar and sometimes I just don't want to deal with the drama even if the drama is 
like probably really good for the sport. Yeah, so I, I, I haven't been shy. I'm more excited about the World Championships being in St. George than being in Kona, um, at least for this year. Uh, given both races of the year, like one hasn't, uh, World Championships hasn't happened in 2019, so I think the first one to happen is like a huge statement and there's absolutely nothing that was going to get me to miss this and I like that it's a different course and it's a different time of year and it sort of sh throws off like the established pros who have kind of gotten their Kona cycle down. They know which races to lead into that. They know how many weeks how to start everything and, and a May race really threw curveballs at everyone and then the course is just, it's like the perfect course for me. Wetsuit swim, hard hilly bike, um, some altitude involved, heat, but not crazy heat and dry heat, which I like, and then also a, uh, a big time strength run. We've often seen at, at Kona that the winners come from that front pack of the swim group most years, um, and, they, and they stay ahead, and we particularly saw that in 2019, both, both Jan and T.O., they had the pace honest and hard up front, and the kind of main group of cyclists, they, they didn't bridge up enough time to be competitive, so, Obviously, uh, we have to have allies, I have to have allies, and we have to work together, and, and I don't think it's a surprise that it's like Lionel and I are probably the two strongest guys on the bike in that group, but um, I really hope it's not just me and Lionel that are going to have to take that charge and that responsibility. I know everyone can help out, guys like Ben Hoffman can help out, guys like Jan Van Berkel can help out. Um, unfortunately, we lost Joe Skipper, um, who would have been a great asset. I have noticed Cam Worth is on the start list. He hasn't removed his name, so I have a feeling he might be showing up, which would be terrific. But, um, you know, yeah, of course, we've got Sebastian Keenley is showing up, and, and he's making a big hoorah. And so th there's names and there's people with the firepower to do it, and we just can't sit around and expect one person to do the work up front. We all kind of have to work together. and. And if we all do that, then it gives any one of us a chance at the win and, and all of us a chance at the podium. So, yeah, we're all going to be hunting as a group. And I, I personally feel that we can do it 100%, especially if you look at what that front pack, swim pack is, that top, top group. It's, it doesn't have the firepower it used to have on the bike. And there's even more firepower coming from behind. So it, it should be doable. Ooh, I mean, well, obviously Lionel. Um, we can start with the people kind of close to me. Lionel and the Norwegians, I would say, are the main ones, but also Jan Van Berkel, Sebastian Keenle. Um, those are kind of the main guys I'm thinking about. But uh, the thing, big thing about a World Champs is anyone can perform on the day, so I'm not discounting anyone on that start list, and, and anyone can do well. Of course, we just saw Ben Hoffman just won an Ironman, so he's come into his form. So there's a lot of people with a lot of cards to play and in a big dynamic on race day right that anyone can impact the race oh so this is a great question um you know i was talking with thorsten from tri ratings who does not have me seated to do even remotely well in the race and, and he asked uh well do you have ambitions or are you just trying to learn and i said uh or are you just trying to be in the mix of things for as long as possible till you blow up and i said i hope to be in the mix of things to the finish line so that's my goal, to the finishing banner. Um, are you intimidated going into the World Championship this year? Honestly, no, I'm not. Um, I mean, obviously there's, there's brilliant athletes and there's fantastic athletes, but instead of being intimidated, which I, which I frankly was at 70.3 Worlds last year, even though I got second, but I was intimidated by a lot of guys on that start list and didn't feel I could do it. This year I'm excited about who's there and, and what I can do with them. Yeah, so thanks so much for having me on the channel. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen me before and some of you haven't. So when I win Ironman St. George, you're gonna wanna make sure you've already watched all my YouTube videos. I have my own channel, Going Long with Sam Long. We'll connect the newest video. Um, it just came out. I'm doing my own series about the road to St. George. So tune in, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you very much for, for tuning in today. And um, thank you Talbot and Lionel for doing what you do for this sport.